In the world of custom 1911s, there are only a few select big names that dominate the game. Wilson Combat, Nighthawk Custom, Cabot, Les Bear, and Ed Brown are the dominant contenders, and each offers their own take on the timeless platform. If you've been lucky enough to own multiple pieces from more than one of the manufacturers I just listed, you've probably noticed what I did. Each manufacturer tends to have their own character implemented into their various 1911 lines. Wilson Combat has probably been the most innovative and offers the most widespread lineup. Nighthawk Custom gives you a unique spin in that each of their firearms is built from start to finish by the same gunsmith. Cabot likes to build their 1911s around different themes or backstories. Then there's Ed Brown. Ed Brown seems to play the no-nonsense card. Although Ed Brown doesn't offer a wide array of different models, the list of custom options is as vast as any of the manufacturers I just noted. It seems to me that function over form is the outlying mindset when I look at his collection. Then comes the FX series of 1911s. At first glance, you look at the lines and the finish and you think, whoa, an Ed Brown that's finally built for the 21st century. Then you look closer and start to see the overwhelming similarities to the Cobra line of 1911s and come to the obvious conclusion. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. The Cobra Carry has been one of Ed Brown's most successful platforms, and rightfully so. The snakeskin front and rear serrations, the bobtail grip, and the tightest tolerances known to man have resulted in one of the highest quality carry 1911s in the game. The only real problem with the Cobra, to some anyways, has always been that its aesthetics were kinda blah. So in comes the FX series of pistols. First came the FX-1, which added slide cuts, aggressive styling, and a beautiful industrial stainless finish, and Alien G10 grips to boot. Then came the FX-2, which added a bobtail grip, filled those slide cuts, and built the slide to cater to the RMRCC. Now notice, I didn't say it was optics cut. I said built to cater the RMRCC. To my knowledge, this is the first 1911 I've ever seen that was literally built with the intention of fully incorporating a micro red dot. So let me back up and explain that line. Sure, there have been countless custom and commercial 1911s that have had their slides milled to accommodate a red dot. What no one else has done though, is to specifically create a slide that was built to not only accommodate a red dot, but to do so at a depth which allows you to co-witness with your standard height sights and to sit directly on the slide with no adapter plate necessary. Did they stop there? Absolutely not. They also moved the rear irons in front of the optic in order to co-witness with the red dot in the only way that really makes sense. Now this is going to be a touchy subject, but here it goes. As a guy that prefers any pistol I own to have an optic, I'm no stranger to pistol mounted red dots. Nine times out of 10, the optic will be sandwiched between a set of front and rear suppressor height irons to co-witness with. This makes the dot the second reference point in terms of depth that you see. No matter how you train, ultimately, your eye has to develop a muscle memory that only uses the first and third points of reference as exactly that, reference. Your focus needs to be on that second focal point, which takes some getting used to. With the red dot now being the first focal point, you can focus your eye on the dot first while allowing the second and third focal points serving only as a reference. In plain English, it's easier to keep your eye solely focused on the dot. Now everyone's eyes are different. Throw an astigmatism or some other optical issue in there and you can throw out everything I just said. For a guy with 20-20 vision though, this makes a world of difference. The fact that it sits so low on the slide is another huge factor. If you're carrying this thing, the RMRCC will not get in the way. It also doesn't feel like an afterthought. It feels like a part of the pistol's natural form, and that is a big deal. Now in addition to a fantastic set of optics, the FX2 also has a phenomenal barrel and a superb trigger. 
The stainless barrel is beautifully hand fit and reverse crown for a super tight alignment. The aluminum trigger is light, crisp, and breaks like glass at a comfortable three and a half pounds. The slide to frame finish is as tight as was to be expected. Every hard edge has been beveled and smoothed for a flawless finish. Front slide cuts, rear patriotic slide serrations, and the industrial stainless finish all give this pistol a perfect blend of old and new. All in all, it's a beautiful rendition and a welcomed addition to a lineup that was desperate for some evolution. If you're looking for a 1911 that's been methodically modernized to utilize today's technology and make you a better shooter, look no further. So what's your favorite 1911? Leave your comment below. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel, and most importantly, share it with your friends. Until next time, stay safe, and may God bless the Republic.